Yeah, and welcome, uh, Lindo Walker and uh, Rong Huichen as our fantastic guest for today's lecture. So uh, let's start. Um, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Xi Yunxu, a second year um, student at Pratt, and I will be your host for this morning. First of all, I would like to thank you all for joining us today, especially for our wonderful guests. Lindo Walker and Rong Hui Chen. And this is our third webinar on the speculations of art after pandemic art talk series. And this project designed for leading conversations with uh, artists globally. So different uh, languages will be using during this meeting. For people who attend our uh, former webinars, uh, we are thank you so much for continuing to pay attention to our works. Uh, in order to make this happen today, I have to thank Dai Qingzhu a lot. Uh, she is our producer um, who initiates uh, this uh, event and invite our guest for today. Uh, and Jiang Zhizhou will be our co-host to moderate the meeting. And our fantastic interpreter and translator, Jordan, responsible for the Q&A part. And the lecture will break into two parts. Uh, first, in three minutes, artist talk by Linda Walker, and 10 minutes um, Q&A. Then, um, another 15 minutes talk by Ron Hui Chen, and 10 more minutes Q&A. Uh, we will also want to introduce you a stack system, uh, which means you could leave your questions or uh, comments in the chat. And after the artist talk, uh, we will call on the questions so that we could make the whole process fluently. Um, 大家好,我是徐喜云,一名Pratt在读研究生,也是本次会议的主持人。首先,我代表我所有的伙伴们对今天邀请到的两位艺术家表示由衷的感谢。Linda Tingen 江之洲担任协助主持人同时为了让大家高效利用时间，我们建议使用聊天留言板系统。您可以在聊天室中留下您的问题和评论，这样在艺术家演讲完毕后，我们会按顺序请艺术家为我们一一进行解答。Okay, now um, please allow me to introduce our first um, artist, Linda Walker. Her solo practice has been concerned with themes of gender, identity, time, and fashion. Um, the nature of images and the process of looking are core conceptual concerns that um, pervade her photographies and installations. In recent years, she has had solo shows at um, Hyman Project, um, Stockholm, um, with Harvey, um, Berlin, and the um, Kunstler House, um, Bassanium, Berlin where she had a one-year residency. Okay, I will pass my baton to Lindo and welcome. 好的,现在请允许我为您介绍我们的第一位艺术家,林达沃克。他的个人作品一直关注性别,身份,时间和时尚等主题。探寻图像的本质和观赏的过程。这是他摄影作品和装置作品的核心理念。近年来,他在斯
帮他转播。Can you guys see my screen right now? 大家能看到我的屏幕吗 ？Yes. OK. Cool. 所以我现在将要播放嗯 ，Linda Walker 之前录好的讲座视频，请大家观赏。Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me to speak. And for your interest in my practice, I very much hope that. You will find some interesting things and some inspiration.、Uh, I'm very much looking forward to the Q and A at the end. So、uh, please feel free to ask me some difficult questions. I like difficult questions, and、uh, I'll be referring、uh, throughout to work that's on my website, which is lindalwalker.com. Lindal is spelt L-Y-N-D-A-L, and、uh, there you can find out other information about me. But I'll give you a quick introduction now. I'm Australian. I live in Berlin. I studied at the Victorian College of the Arts in Melbourne in the 90s.、Uh, I have other, I've you know subsequently done masters and so forth.、Uh, Most of my practice has been based in Australia, but I've been in Berlin for five years, and the and the experience of being in Berlin has really affected my work a great deal. All the work that I'm going to discuss、uh, is from from that period, and I think has all been really affected by being in Berlin. And I should say, which is not, and it is related to being in Berlin, is that there is quite a lot of well. There's quite a lot of nudity, and there is some explicit material in my the work that I'll show you.、Um, our chemical breakfast、um, does include some some moments, some very brief moments of explicit material, and there is nudity in other parts of my work as well. In case、uh, that bothers anybody.、Uh, and、uh, yeah, so as an introduction. Uh, I study painting, and I'm still quite influenced by painting. I look at, particularly historical painting, quite a lot for inspiration.、Uh, figurative painting mainly, and most of my work has been photographic or installation based. And most of the work that I'll talk about today is、uh, indeed is the case. And、uh, I have, but I've also written quite a lot. I've curated. I've been involved in lots of community projects, artist-run projects, collaborative projects, and you can find out some more about that in the about section on my website.、Uh, that probably goes somewhere to introducing me. And、uh, now I will share my screen to my website. And、uh, the work that I'll discuss today、uh, includes changing room, the binary curtain, our chemical breakfast, and an aspect of ephemerality is all very well、um, where I made handkerchiefs. And I'm going to start with changing room, which is work that I made at the Kunstler Hospitalien、uh, in Berlin, which is a residency program.、Uh, That I, I had for a year. I'm just gonna see if I can scroll through and find the installation shot as an introduction. So the work was、uh, an installation with photo, three photographic images. The images were all inspired by historical paintings, but the the references and the th the themes that I was interested in were very much contemporary. And、uh, the work was called "Changing Room," and I thought then, as I think even more now, that we are in this process. And when I say we,、um, certainly Western civilization,、um, but probably more broadly in this process of transformation and changing. And I was using the、uh, 
changing rooms, fitting rooms as a metaphor for that change. And I have worked with fashion a lot. I'm really interested in clothing and dressing and undressing and this work uh, really worked with those themes uh, and I'm interested in them uh, as metaphors and in terms of political change but also very much in terms of the personal. So uh, some of the things that were going on at that time, it was actually just pre Me Too um, but I think a lot of the things that came up with Me Too were already bubbling away. Uh, certainly for women, there was not so many surprises to hear of all that abuse of power. And this whole work definitely talked about abuse of power uh, and using, um, using the idea of dressing and undressing and being exposed. Um, so maybe we can go to this image. Uh, I was interested, so this, um, the model is a, a trans person and uh, the image is, uh, the image that I've referred to is, Baltus, is a Baltus picture, which was actually of a, of a little girl and being exposed by another ambiguous figure, maybe a, maybe a little girl, maybe an old lady. Um, and with this image, I was really interested in this idea that, um, yeah, white men were being exposed and that, I mean, I think that it was pre-Me Too uh, and in that way it was kind of fortuitous, but I think that they're being exposed in all sorts of different ways. And I mean, I, um, I'm not without empathy uh, in that, for, for them, uh, but this work was really playing with these ideas of dressed and undressed. Also at that year, 2016, when I began the work, there was a lot of, there were a lot of news items where women being either wearing too much, women being banned from the beach because they were wearing burqas or um, women wearing too little was sort of this, this theme and it was, you know, it's just like we can't get this, can't get this right. Um, and what else to say about this work? Uh, mirrors were important and I've worked with mirrors a lot. So in each of the images, uh, a figure carries a mirror or there is a mirror. So um, in this image, I was referring to uh, in previous past images of truth and time. And the idea is that time exposes truth and truth holds a mirror and truth holds a mirror up to society. And I think we are seeing that a lot. Uh, and usually truth is an innocent young woman and, and time is, a, is an old man and, you know, that's kind of sleazy and wrong, you know, and, and, and I think needed to be exposed. And so this is a fairly simple gesture of just um, of messing with that. And I didn't, um, I, it wasn't, uh, I didn't consistently, you know, change male for female. This is the case, this was the case in this image. Um, this, in this one, this is also truth and it was inspired by uh, a, image from the 19th century of truth escaping her well and and in that case uh, there are men also trying to escape i uh, sorry to hide truth as you know many people it's their vested interest to hide the truth and uh so this image i in this image i imagined uh, a young woman um boldly posting pictures of herself on instagram and uh, being criticised for being vain or um, but a kind of bold selfie taker and, uh, you know, exposing a type of truth there as well. Uh, that's probably enough about changing room from now. Oh, except that, okay, the mirrors. So it was an installation and uh, on the back of these images, there are mirrors, uh, as you can see there. So anybody who um, viewed the exhibition, was in the exhibition, was also in the exhibition. They were in the images. They were part of the, uh, yeah, part of the installation, part of the change, part of the dressing and undressing and their own uh, streetwear that they'd come in with um, also forms a contrast to the 
some of the nudity uh, in the rest of the images. And uh, now I'll have a look at our chemical breakfast, which uh, is a video that I made. It's actually the first video that I made. Uh, so far, the only video that I've made, although I'd very much like to make more videos. Uh, I also made this work at the Kunstler House for Tanyan. Uh, I'll turn the sound down for now uh, and, uh, and introduce it um, uh, while it sort of starts up. Uh, this was an idea that I had for a really long time. Uh, I've, been, I've worked with fans a lot, with folding fans in particular, and been really fascinated by them. Uh, there's lots of things I like about them. Uh, and I had the idea to make a video with a man dancing with a fan for ages. And it took me quite a while to find the right man and to kind of have the, yeah, to sort of actually make the work happen. Uh, and I always wanted it to be quite a playful work. Uh, fans are interesting to me because they are two-sided. Uh, they, there's a great, there's a fascinating history of them um, and, and interesting in terms of the relationship between East and West and trade between China and Europe. Uh, they first came to Europe in the 16th century and then they became really important um, fashion items, but also kind of items of respectability and, and women could hide behind their fans and court. There was a whole language around fans. Uh, and yeah, so that, there's sort of lots of things that are interesting to me about them. And I've made quite a lot of fans since, you know, over the last 10 years. And uh, this, I would say, is the kind of main work um, the fan really plays an important part and it's very important to me uh, the fan in terms of gender and that was obviously a big thing that I was playing with in this work um, so fans when they're open they're like a vagina and when they're closed they're like a phallus and that was interesting to me and I really with this work I just went fairly literal with that but I'm really interested in an object that a single object that could be both very feminine and very masculine. And yeah, that was a, a part of what I was playing with with this work. But yeah, it is playful. I, I think that the, the really sexual and sexy aspect of the work is not the explicit imagery uh, so much as it is the eye contact from the dancer um, and the playfulness. Uh, but, you know, everybody's sexuality is really different and so other people, uh, I mean, it's a, work, it's a work that I made for, um, it's an ambiguous work and one that I am interested in a response from and, uh, you know, I'm fascinated to see how straight men respond to it versus straight women versus gay men. Um, and yeah, I guess most people you know, find it to be something amusing and uh, playful about it, but, but people also get kind of really confronted in various ways. Uh, mainly, mainly um, I've had really great responses from straight women. Like, oh, I love them. I want, I want somebody to come and dance like that in my kitchen. Uh, so it's also a kind of fantastical work, uh, a contribution to um, enjoyment and pleasure uh, for you know, whoever might, uh, yeah, need that. <laughs> uh, and don't we, don't we all need that? Um, is there something else I should be saying about alchemical breakfast? Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, the eye contact is really important. Uh, the There is a sense that the there's an ambiguity about whether this is a real place. The kitchen is like a, it is a bit like a set, just very flat. Uh, and so the the idea of 
seeing and looking and what's real. Um, and fake is, is quite important to me. I mean, also the domestic environment was important. When I started researching this work, I looked up lots of images of men dancing by themselves. And very often there was this sense of the men trying to escape. And it was very important to me that this was not a man trying to escape. This was a man probably entertaining his lover. And uh, so that was what made me decide to put it in the domestic environment. Um, yeah, that, that, it, that it, it wasn't this yeah, narrative of, of escape at all. Uh, it was yeah, playful and loving and, and yeah, the eye contact is, is important uh, and the sense, I hope, that you are uh, you're, you're having this kind of intimate experience with this man um, on the video in my art. <laughs> um, back to my website. Uh, I will talk about the binary curtain. So I should say, uh, the I've, I've begun, I've, I've started working much more intuitively than I used to. I mean, I'm quite a kind of concept driven person. I'm a, I, I spend a lot of time thinking. I am very curious. That is a really major motivation in my life and in my art practice. And I consider myself very fortunate to uh, be able to pursue my curiosities. And that's uh, really an amazing thing about being an artist, a real privilege, I think. And um, yeah, so a lot, of, a lot of the work that I do is really just um, quite a lot of reading and investigating, looking at pictures, you know, going to museums, searching on websites, uh, just sort of, yeah, following, following my curiosity, certainly engaging in, um, to a certain extent, the news. I mean, less so the news now, but um, it just seems so divided and um, repetitive and so forth. But uh, I mean, I'm definitely really interested in um, yeah, feminist issues, I guess, particularly, uh, but really just sort of seeing how uh, our lives are changing and our world is changing. And uh, I'm really interested uh, and engaged with themes of post-colonialism, for example, although that's not something that necessarily comes through in my work a great deal, but it, it was on my mind with... Uh, the changing room, uh, and I was very glad to be working with models who were from from Brazil and from Taiwan and actually from Iceland, um, which was a colony until 1945, uh, until very recently, really. Um, but yeah, so these are things things I'm talking about. But, sorry, these are things I'm thinking about. They're not necessarily present in the work in all the work. Uh, so the binary curtain was a work that I made really quickly and really intuitively. Uh, so that's um, I what I was sort of trying to, with all that rambling, I was trying to get to uh, the fact that I'm increasingly working intuitively and so sort of following, um, I mean, I even now go so far as to say following my spirit guides, uh, but actually even when I did this last year, I wouldn't said that but um, where I used to really stress about getting everything right and thinking everything through very carefully and considering all the options I'm now much more likely to uh, to sort of say okay well that well for example I'll give you an example here that's that the model that I chose here for um, the hanged man uh, I met uh, and he has a tattoo of a hanged man on his arm. And when I told him that I was thinking about this work, he said, well, I'll do, I'll do it. I'll, you know, I hadn't even, I didn't even, I don't think I even said I was looking for a model, but I, I mean, I was. Uh, and 
and it wasn't that I, when I started talking to this guy about his tattoo, that I was thinking he could be the model. I think maybe I had something else quite in mind, but um, in terms of what my model would be. But then there's this man who's interested and engaged and enough in this theme to have a king man tattoo. So uh, I just immediately went, great, going, he's the model. Uh, where in the past I would have, yeah, um, thought about that a lot. Um, and now I, I sort of just see that as a kind of big the universe. But yeah, this, so this work uh, was quite intuitively generated and I, I'm interested in curtains. I've been wanting to make curtains for ages, make, make work with curtains for ages and they have a similarity to the changing room. They're this, uh, this screen, this barrier, which behind which something happens, but they are just a curtain, so they can also be pulled aside and ex things that are, other things are exposed. Uh, I really like printing on fabric, so I used to work in a photography department which was very concerned with uh, big, uh, special, or, you know, big, big fine art prints. And I got really frustrated by the grandiosity of these prints that had to be handled very carefully and and I would wonder what what's sort of so important about these images that they have to be so big and so precious and I mean this work is now now in the realm of big as well but this work can you know can be folded up and, and put away and so in response to the really big photographs that were being done in the, the photography department that I was working in uh, about 11 years ago now, I started making scarves and I was really with photographs on them and I was really, really interested in the fact that you can screw up a scarf and put it in your pocket uh, or you can wear it and get sweat on it, which of course is not what you're supposed to do with photographs. And similarly with the folding, that was uh, also an important part is this kind of um, messing with the preciousness. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, to me that's a very like those sorts of uh, that's very elitist, this precious big um, artworks, and, and for me, I'm much more interested in something that's accessible and uh, yeah, and kind of you know a bit naughty. I mean, I'm a bit naughty and disrespectful to, to those big guys with their big photographs, uh, and so this work. Um, yeah, it came up quite intuitively. I was interested in the hanged man, men. So, I mean, it, it's quite a, it's a kind of really gendered work. It's a man and a woman, and but I but I think both the, both men and women are experiencing these levels of discomfort, really. And so, uh, since Me Too, I think women are increasingly exposed. And men, of course, are increasingly exposed. Uh, and men are having to see things from a different perspective. And women are having to see things from a different perspective. And I, I would say um, that uh, Black Lives Matter, and particularly with the, um, uh, the, the public, well, the, the, um, yeah, the incredible um, protests and, and power that that movement is having and uh, that particularly sort of in its um, intensity at the end of May, uh, we were all being encouraged to educate ourselves about our white privilege and, and in doing that, um, those of us with white privilege are having to look from a different perspective. So we are also upside down uncomfortable realising um, the ways that we have gained from racism and the ways that our actions continue to create racist situations and, and inequalities. Uh, the, the woman in this photo is me, uh, so uh, yeah, um, what to say about that? Um, uh, I, I mean, I've taken lots of photographs of men in their underwear, women in their underwear, uh, and I felt like it was only fair to expose myself in some way. Uh, 
I also hope that there's a, a boldness to this um, and uh, you know this it was an empowering experience uh, you know but also a kind of uh, there's a vulnerability in it uh, I think this work I haven't uh, this work hasn't been kind of widely seen it was exhibited in Berlin at a gallery called Hoshek Contemporary which is on a boat so that to explain the um, the rough uh, the context there that's the roof of the boat the corrugated iron and uh, yeah um, you know no white walls kind of basic lighting um, but yeah it hasn't been discussed extensively so I'm not entirely sure of sort of people's response to it um, and I, you know, I guess I don't have such sort of um, refined way of discussing it but I am going to discuss the last bits. Um, go back to my website and discuss uh, the handkerchiefs I made. So this is a this book is a collaborative work with the painter Tony Park, and uh, it was published last year. It is about uh, a musician named Roland Howard who uh, was in a punk band called The Birthday Party and The Boys Next Door and had a really amazing solo career himself, collaborating with Lydia Lunch, uh, appearing in Bim Bender's films and so forth. And uh, he unfortunately died in 2009. And I was going to photograph him and I missed the opportunity and so Tony Clark um, was also is a, is a painter and sometimes a portraitist who was also going to do his portrait. And so we made this book uh, about him, about the, really more about the experience of not photographing him, not, not making his portrait. And so what I wanted to, to discuss um, more than the book is these handkerchiefs that I made, which I made for the launch. Uh, there was an exhibition that accompanied the launch and these are all um the text comes from the book so i wrote um for the book tony made the paintings and, and i wrote about the experience of missing out uh and so this the mood of this work is very different to the previous things i've shown you um but um yeah they're, they're very much about about it's very much about grief and loss uh, I really love handkerchiefs, um, as I love um, curtains and scarves and fans. Um, and with, with this work, it, this image makes it very clear. Uh, handkerchiefs are about as useful to grief as any physical object can be. Like portraiture, they seem to offer some material solution to a problem that starts so physically, but leaves us with an enormous, unmanaged, un manageable thing that is loss and uh, now is also a time of a lot of grief uh, and with a work like this uh, the, the, uh, they are printed on silk uh, and I hand embroidered the initial in the corner uh, so I hope there's this sense of quality and of um, uh, some, some kind of grace and some um, uh, some you know, the, the value of putting time into beautiful things, uh, into mourning and, and into grieving the things that we are losing. I mean, I am actually very positive about the future. I think we're in a bad time right now. It's very, well, a very difficult time. It's a very challenging time. Uh, but many people are... In, in a position to rise to that, that challenge. Uh, many are left dealing with, with grief. Uh, that is also a reality. Uh, but I really do think uh, the role of the artist is very important now. Uh, artists, um, our job is to imagine uh, and to create images uh, for a better world, I think. Um, I, the next, my next body of work is not, is not for the art world. I, I hope the art world might find it interesting, but it's not a project 
that I am really pitching towards galleries or even imagining, you know, we're going galleries, the context and its place is, is different um, because I feel like uh, contemporary art is really elitist and it, the kind of economy of contemporary art is really problematic. So much of it is about rich investors and so much um, art that becomes successful is because a rich investor, um, you know, bought somebody's work when they were young and they continue to support that artist regardless of whether their work has continued to be of a good quality. Um, and, you know, things like uh, a lot of museums are, and, and patrons of the arts, um, you know, do that because actually they're up to horrible, corrupt things and it's a way of you know, whitewashing their, their, you know, dodgy uh, activities, um, you know, whether that's often like the, the oil industry or the Sackler Foundation, you know, um, who are, have so much blood on their hands with the opioid crisis in the US. Um, so, uh, I, yeah, I think that's too important for that to be exploited by those people and uh, yeah, I'm always looking for ways to be more, for my artwork to, uh, yeah, be um, proposing, exploring a, a better world. And I mean, as I say that, you know, I also think, oh God, you know, what, what, what effect does my work have? You know, I'm not sure. I hope it, it certainly inspires some people. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, thinking about thinking about a future, a better future, and empowering ourselves to imagine a better future and to realise that as artists, that's our that's our superpower. That's what that's what we're trained for. Uh, so on that note, I am going to leave you and answer some questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, um, we are heading to the Q&A part. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, um, please bring to the table. 好的，那么我们现在进入问答环节，大家有什么对林豆作品的疑问，可以放到呃我们的聊天室中，仅仅尽管提问出来。您也可以直接口头提问，嗯，也可以啊，就不论您用何种方法都是可以的。好的，下面
reality. I mean, there's a, there are advantages. I mean, we're doing this. I'm in Berlin. I'm from Australia. Um, we're connect, I'm connecting with the US and with China. You know, this is very exciting. So there are really great positive things. But I feel like people miss that tactile experience and that there will be a role for that tactile experience. Um, yeah, and I guess I'm, rather than having any answers, I'm more, I, it's that I'm curious about, as, as, as you are in asking the question, I'm, I'm curious to see what, what will happen. Um, I don't think we, I think we will, I think if we shift to the purely online, I, I don't think, well, I don't think that's going to fully happen because I think that uh, hum, humans are very tactile. We're very much about our senses and, and it's not just about our eyes and our ears. So I think that the tactile made object will still be really important and it's going to be interesting to see how that, yeah, exists in the world. Okay, thank you, Lindo. And uh, first question is, 那么现在目前的状况是, 我们很多的图像和音乐慢慢的都是出现在屏幕上或者在我们的耳机里面能够被我们可以享受到更多在耳机里听到的音乐很多的图画和音乐作品不再是放在大屏幕上展示放在具体画作中而是通过更多现代化的形式展示出来那林导您对这一现象的看法是什么样子的呢那林导对此的回答是这是一个非常有意思的现象我对于下个月甚至下年这一现象的变化也是非常好奇的我们想一想在未来这种
uh, although honestly, I would like to reach a broad audience. Uh, I know that my audience is often women uh, and um, I guess I get, when I get, um, when people tell me they like their work, they're often young women. Um, but I, I, yeah, um, it's an interesting question and it's not one I've thought about, to be honest. Um, I, I, what I think about when I make my work, I do think about how it's going to be read and how it can be comp comprehended. Um, but I don't really think about who that person is so much as making my point quite clear. Okay, thank you, Linda. 那么我们第二个问题是您想象的或者说您作品在创作作品过程中去想象的呃为呃观众是谁那么林斗的回答是我想象的观众其实是所有人那么首先呃更清楚的来讲就是说我在创作自己画呃自己的作品的时候主要针对的是何为有着相同的关注点和相同兴趣的这群人我可能更多的会去思考在我创作作品的时候去思考我这幅作品会怎样被人们去理解怎样去被别人解读但是如果提到这个目标群体可能我之前也没有一个太多的去思考 Thank you Thank you Thank you I have a question. Can I just jump in? I don't know what the the protocol is. Is that is that okay if I go ahead and ask a question? Sure, sure. Please go ahead. Great. So I apologize. I came in a bit late, but while I have been listening to this this really interesting conversation, I have been reading the interview with you, um, and I'll put the link in there so everybody can see what I'm referring to. Um, and this is actually it's a good segue from what you just said, because in your interview, you say, I think as I've grown older, I've become less controlling of how people interpret my work. So I would love to hear a little bit more from you about that relationship that I think artists often think about, you know, to what extent does it matter that my intent, my motivation is legible, you know, specifically in the way that it came from me to the viewer. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. And thank you so much for organizing this platform. I think this is, this is fantastic. So thank you to the organizers. Yeah, I would like to say thank you to the organizers as well. Thank you for having me and um, for uh, the whole process. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting question. And I would say that now I have a, even a, my attitude has actually changed even since that interview, which I think was in 2017. And now I see myself as a kind of channel and that I'm just facilitating the ideas and throughout my practice, I've known that some, some ideas have sort of arrived, you know, almost fully formed, while others I've really had to struggle with. And now increasingly the ideas arrive fully formed and then I have to make the decisions and do the really practical stuff of making the images and getting them printed. Um, but now I increasingly feel like I'm in service to some kind of greater, um, yeah, but the, yeah, to the idea, I'm in service to the idea, where certainly when I was a student, I would really want to control all the meaning and I would think, um, I would be annoyed if people didn't 
see the work the way I wanted it to be seen. And then I knew when I was teaching, uh, that was always an important process of, of getting students to understand that you can't control what people think. And you do want to control it up to a point because you don't want to, I mean, I don't want to be, say, I do not, I do not want to, there's all these ideas I don't want to support. Um, but yeah, but uh, so I do have to control it to some extent, but yeah, now I feel almost like a channel, which I wouldn't have imagined that I would say that certainly when I was a student, but even, um, even three years ago, I don't think I would have said that. Thank you. Thanks very much. And thank you. Thank you for your questions and also for your answers. 来的稍微晚一些然后也不太熟悉流程但是我有一个问题想要问到咱们的嘉宾这个问题和刚才的问题其实是相关的我读到了对于您的一次访谈然后我会把这个访谈的链接发到我们的聊天室这样大家就可以
、呃、城市化、工业化之间的关系。嗯，现已出版同名摄影集《陈荣辉》，嗯，属于中国当代摄影师合集中的一本。同时，他获得过世界新闻摄影大赛，嗯，尤金·史密斯摄影奖。三影堂 ALPA 奖等众多国内外知名的摄影奖项，让我们掌声欢迎陈荣辉。Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me to attend today's activity. And so I will show my screen. And here. So I just had a solo show、uh, in Three Shadows Gallery in Beijing, and I want to show some、uh, exhibitions photos about my project called、uh, "Runaway World." This is what I want to talk today.、Uh, I will read my statement and、uh, share my exhibition and、uh, the photos. At the same time, so I start.、Uh, Runaway World is an on-road project carving China's suburbs that mix amusement park landscapes with environmental portraits.、Um, over the past forty years, China has experienced a rapid change due to modernization. This is also part of my experience. Like the young of other generations, I, le I left my hometown Lishui, which is a small village, in search of opportunities in the big cities. And like other young people, I find this debture has left me with an unstable sense of self. I feel out of place in both the city and the countryside. I cannot find a sense of belonging. This contradiction has grown sharper since I moved to Shanghai in 2015. Most immigrant young people choose to live in the suburbs because the rent is cheaper. At the same time. As urbanization spreads into the suburbs, more and more theme parks are appearing there. On weekends, young people like me, we want to go. We like to go to the amusement park to enjoy the excitement. The amusement park has become a most popular space for young people to let to let off steam. Steam. I used a large format camera and a six-foot laser to take a broad view of the amusement park, and I also took I also took portraits of young people by themselves at home or in the office. I hope to create a dialogue between inside portraits and exterior landscapes. Which is also a dialogue between the individual young Chinese and the urbanization of this country. And now I want to share some my process of this project. So regarding this project, I think more about how to deal with my archive and the practice reaction, recreation my archives. So during the quarantine in America, I always look at the photos I took in the past, especially the theme parks projects I did before in China. And at that time, when I looked the amusement parks photos I did, I realized the world once recorded by the photos can never come back. The amuse the theme park photos for this project. All taken before I came to the United States.、Uh, I went to Yale last year. This is, was my first time to go abroad to study、uh, art or photography. I studied journalism in China. So when shooting this project, 
I always carried, I always carry a six foot leather. So the photos were all from a thumb word perspective because I don't want, I don't want just to photograph the theme park itself, but also the real estate uh, surrounding the theme park because theme parks are an aspect of China's urbanization. In many cases, the establishment of this theme park is accompanied by real estate development. And uh, in the exhibition uh, here, so you will find this is two photos together, like here. So join the exhibition, I hope to lower the, lower the photos, I mean the amusement park photos, so the viewer can experience the same feeling when I took this photo. And I hope, I hope the, oh, okay, look like this. I put most of the amusement parks lower than the individual portraits. And uh, mm, I went back to China this June and after returning from the United States, I was quarantined in a hotel for 14 days. My friends delivered me a lot of Chinese delicious food. And some people even delivered Papa Eyes to me. You know, Papa Eyes just opened its first store in Shanghai. After 14 days, I visited many friends' house because of the epidemic. I don't know why I can see them again. So I hope to take more portraits of my friends. And the most of my friends rent houses in Shanghai or Hangzhou, other big cities. So the, shoot, so the shooting location is relatively small. Many times they handled up on desk or window, or window uh, sales or sofas and so on. In the exhibition, I put most of the portraits photos higher and I hope that uh, independent in individuals have their own value or have more autonomy. So this is the, the photo project. And at the same time, when I came back to China this June, I also did uh, uh, four channel videos. I want to share part, I want to show the first one to you. I will show this very quickly. And this is a no sound video, so I will I will read my statement or my process about this work. So next door to my house is a theme park, which has been closed for half a year. A month, a month ago, this theme park started to reopen. And I want to see what the theme park is like now. What kind of state are the people inside now? So I used a Fuji X-T4 and a 400 lens. On the one hand, I want to hope I hope to use the slow motion of the camera to slow down the theme park because most of the theme park are about high speed. So the slow motion function of this camera is 240 FPS, which can slow down the original video at 1010 the speed. The most interesting point is that when the camera use this function, the camera cannot record the sound. And I want to keep this silent because people like to hear most in theme parks. If it's silent, it seems like a new paradise for me, I think. And you will find a lot of details when we slow down the speed and the people's fearing, people's face. And another, um, another thing is like, because I use a 400 lens, it's very long, so I can catch, I can record the subtle change in their face, facial ex expressions. And uh, I can write for you like this. Yeah, I want to catch some like moments we cannot 
realized before, and uh, particularly now after you know uh, China is almost the same. Uh, go back to the same life, but we don't know, and maybe some kind of like poetic moment like this, people can tell us what happened just uh, two hundred days ago. So I, I did a uh, for channel videos about this project. I just share this one for you, and yeah, and here is a. Uh, the video's installation. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, um, then it's our second Q and A time. I will pass my speaker to Jordan again, and please feel free to ask questions. Uh, uh, 你好。你好, 他的问题是, what do you think of photography's relationship to sculpture? Uh,他的问题是,呃,摄影,呃,就是您对摄影和雕塑之间的关系是怎么看待的? Um,就是,呃,我,我一直觉得就是说, 因为摄影是一种相对来说是一种平面媒介嘛 他是那个Metro Pictures Gallery 代理的一个艺术家我以前自己并没有尝试过雕塑中学到一些可能性的 and thank you for your answer. Our first question, as just mentioned, uh, what is uh, how do you perceive the relationship between the photography and sculptures? And the, and uh, and our teacher's answer to that question is actually, as he perceives, photography is a play media of um, arts and sculpture. On the sculptures, on the other hand, are three D or four D form of medium. So actually through developing photographies, we can solve many of the problems we have in sculptures. And last year, as we had one of our lectures hosted by Sarah Vandebeek, uh, one of our lectures that brings, uh, one of the lectures that bring us a talk. And actually in her work, he will make a sculpture and to, and to take the pho photos of that sculpture and then to destroy the sculptures. But uh, she will find a more dimensional way to reconstruct such an artwork. And this is one of the novel way of trying to integrate both the use of photographer, photography and sculptures to reconstruct a new form of art. Actually, this is one of the demonstration of my answers to that question. And also 
many of our artists are making an attempt to try to tackle the different relationship between photography and sculptures. And as for me, I think um, I'm very interested in using a plain language like photos when it tries to translate into another art form, we have to, and I'm interested in finding a more dimensional way to translate that language into a different form. And that's the area I'm interested in. And I hope in the future, I will probe into that field more. And thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just uh, sent two links about the artist named Sarah Vanderbeek and also Sharon Lockhart. I think they are their works are um, dealing with the relationship between sculpture and uh, photography. And if you have time, you can just check the link. I really love their works. I mean, Sharon Lockhart and Sarah Vanderbeek. 那么我们刚才老师也是在网上为我们浏览了一下 Sarah Vanderbeek 和 Sharon 的作品，那么他们的作品中其实就展现了雕塑和摄影之间的关系，也是嗯我们嗯我们老师非常喜欢的两位画两位呃艺术家。如果大家感兴趣的话，可以去网上浏览一下他们的艺术作品。嗯。荣辉我这边有一个问题是在腾讯会议那边看到的是这样您认为现在作为一位纪实摄影师在当下的环境生存比较困难吗还是其实很正常嗯就是说呃在中国或者说的语境当中呃纪实摄影的这个概念比较小
Mr. Chen believes that lots of people confuse the ideas of um, documentary, uh, documentary, photography, journalism, photography, and uh, the normal and the ordinary photography, act, uh, photographer. And actually, many people are just utilizing a style called documentary st style, uh, style, or they are utilizing another approach, which is near documentary style. And most of people will narrow it down to similar to journalism, photography. Actually, those concepts are different. And many good photographers, they can use, utilize this style in their artwork, but that doesn't make them documentary photographer. And also, I don't consider myself as one. And uh, it actually, um, in many of uh for for graham in uh, actually in his uh in his artwork he doesn't include many of the stage photos or recreation in his artworks and for example a uh, lot of his work are just about like the normal things on the street and indeed not all of our works need to have the stage uh, photographer we just try to utilize the right, the suitable approach in our work that is okay. And also uh, we can find examples in the work of Steven Shaw, Lee, and uh, a few others. And uh, if you are interested, we will give you links to refer to their works. They have implemented this documentary and near documentary uh, style in their artwork. They don't, Ne uh, this necessary doesn't necessarily include any like image changes in their work or any recreations in the early stage of their work. What I'm trying to say here is that I'm quite confident. Uh, we have to like be really confident in the development of um, documentary photography, and also it is important for us to find the rightful approach in your artwork. And thank you. Okay, um, I find a question and comments uh, in our chat. So I will read it aloud. Um, it's from um, Zhao Jiawei. Uh, hi, uh, Ronghui. Thanks for sharing your work. I uh, love it. Uh, what do you think about American social landscape environment? Have you done some work? I'm interested you as a foreign artist. How do you think the landscape or environment in America? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, yeah. Just like I said before, I just went to America last year, and I never, uh, I never been abroad, and I never uh, received art education before. I learned the photography by myself, so it's very interesting. Like I, I can share because this is my website. I can share my uh, first work I did in New Haven, uh, and uh, it's very interesting. It's a it's a project I called An Ordinary Evening in New Haven. It's, this title comes from uh, the poet uh, Warren Stevens. I'm not sure whether you are familiar. It's an American uh, poet. I, I really love his work, his, his poem. And uh, I want to share some, I think as a foreigner or something like outside, I mean, in the end, I think I should try my best to find who I am. And I think in American, in some way, it's easier for me to find who I am. So I want to show this project to you. Uh, I will show some very short experience. You know, so when I arrived in New Haven, most of my classmates and uh, my teachers told me like, New Haven is not a safe city. And uh, it's not safe to carry a camera at night, you, you want to take photos outside. So I always run from my school to my house 
every day. I just run back to my home. So when I arrived at my house, I just uh, opened my door and I never turned on my light. I just lay down on the sofa and uh, watch the beautiful, beautiful light from outside. So at that moment, um, it reminds me my childhood in a small village in China. I was a left behind a child. I was uh, lived in a very small village, uh, Li Shui, a small village in Zhejiang province. And uh, my parents have had to go to big cities to support me and my grandparents. So it's true, like, you know, in Chinese villages, the, there are a lot of older men or older people, they, they just want to save money. So they never turn on the lights at the night, like my grandparents did. So at night, I just enjoy the natural light at night and uh, try to catch like the beauty at night. It's very interesting at that moment. So I did this project. I turned on the lights and just capture the beauty about my house. So this is my kitchen and this is my door, the door of my house. And I also went to my classmates' house and asked them to turn on, uh, turn off the lights and in, and enjoy the beauty at the night. Yeah, I mean, even I am not in China, but I'm still think a lot of who I am or where I came from. Yeah. This Chinese, I'll speak myself. It's a bit long. Okay. Can I say it? Ah, you say it. I can. Yeah. Um. That actually, we also, we, we, uh, have a participant, uh, have a participant who raised a question. Uh, I'm very grateful. 能够给我们做于做出呃做一个关于您作品的分享，非常喜欢您的作品。那么您对于美国的社会环境有什么看法？有没有做过相关类似的一些艺术创作？我对于您的经历非常感兴趣。那么作为一一位外国的艺术家，您怎么看待美国的这种社会环境？那么我们的。讲者今天对这个问题的回答是：，嗯、呃，其实，呃，我是从去，我是在去年才来到美国的，之前没有出过国，也没有学过正式的艺术课程，摄影也是完全自学学会的。那么，我给大家展示一个网站，这里呢记录着我来到纽黑文之后做的第一项艺术作品。那么，其实大家也可以看到我这个艺术作品里面。展现出的，呃，侧面展现出的我对，呃，当时经验的一种思考和体验。那么，其实作为一个在美国的外国人，对于我来讲非常重要的就是找到自我。而美国这个国家的，呃，对于找到自我这一点来讲是非常容易的。呃，我会跟大家分享一些我自己的经验。那么，其实我刚到美国的时候。许多学生和老师都跟我讲说，纽黑文不是一个安全的地方，因此每到晚上，如果我扛着摄像机出去，是非常不安全的。所以基本每次我都会跑回家。那么到了家门口，我会打开门，但是不去开灯，然后躺在沙发上去欣赏外面的自然光线。其实这个经历让我想到了之前在中国。的小乡村，我的经验，我的经历。当时我是一个留守的儿童，和父呃和爷爷奶奶住在浙江丽水一个小村庄。那么我的父母需要为了，呃，需要来到大城市去支持我和爷爷奶奶的生活。那当时在许多中国的小乡村，老人们为了省电，往往晚上不会开灯。这就给了我机会，可以去欣赏一些自然的光线和美丽的夜晚。在纽黑文也是一样，在我的作品中，我有几张照片展现了当时我家的厨房、我家的门口，甚至我会有的时候来到同学家，让他们去关上灯，去欣赏
晚上的夜景自然光线。那么虽然我不在中国，但是却在美国体会到了一样的经历。这也是我对美国的环境的一个看法。然后，嗯、呃，您刚才提到了一个，就是说美国的诗人，不好意思，那块我没有记清，我没有记清楚那个诗人的名字。好来，是史蒂文森。他的中文是 ，sorry。Warren Stevens， 哦，好来是斯蒂文斯的一首诗，不知道大家对这个诗作，嗯、呃，是不是很了解？但是他的诗作里面充分表现出了我当时的一种感受。那非常感谢。OK， 嗯、um, ，So we have a last question for Lindo， 嗯、um, ，It's from。Uh, yeah, um, it's it's boring though, and then um, I will let Alan Frame to ask another question. So sorry about that. Um, thanks for sharing your work. I really love your changing room, and it's perfectly connected the art history and current changing of our society. Um, for the work fan, and the male model is doing action very well and sexy. Sorry. Um, I guess I want to know more about the kitchen, or I would love to learn more an、um, intersection or relationship between the model and the kitchen. Okay,、uh, thank you for、um, your enthusiasm for the work and for the question.、Uh, as I said, I、uh, noticed that a lot of、um, videos, music video clips, or Whatever it was, examples、uh, sometimes in in cinema, examples of men dancing by themselves. They were often escaping, and I wanted to make a a work where the man was very happily present, and that it was quite intimate. So the domestic environment、um, was important.、Uh, I guess kitchens.、Um, You know, are perhaps not the tip, the typical place of a man.、Uh, of course, although most men cook and can cook,、uh, but so maybe there was some tension there. I mean, I thought it would be quite appealing to women、uh, to see men, a man dancing in the kitchen.、Um, and the kitchen was actually my own kitchen. Uh, where I was living at the Kunsthaus Britannia, which is a residency program, and I liked the fact that it was so flat, so it was a bit like a set,、um, and that's quite common in kitchens in Berlin.、Uh, yeah, so I thought that was kind of funny that it was, you know, it was a bit like a theatre set, and it was funny, it was amusing for me dressing up my own kitchen to,、um, yeah, work for. As a dance set,、uh, I'm not sure if that answers the question. But okay, thank you. 那么我们下一个问题是，嗯，非常感谢 Lindo， 非常感谢您分享了自己的作品，真的非常喜欢《更衣室》这幅作品。它其实完美的展现了艺术史和当今社会的变化。那么我也是，呃，作为一个工作狂。呃，对于对于您这幅作品，我是您的粉丝。那么，图、呃、嗯，作品中的男性模特，他以一种非常性感的方式完成了动作。那么，我也想了解，就是更多的关于这幅作品背后厨房，他们有有没有什么更多的具体的意义，或者说，嗯、呃，我想了解一下关于这个厨房。和男性模特之间的关系。那么，我们的 Linda 对此的回答是非常感谢你对我的作品的喜爱。那么，当然，目前我们在市面上也会有很多的电影、影视作品，或者说小的短剧，嗯、呃，都是去展现了男士，呃，独舞的场景。但是，更多的这是有一种逃避的感觉
，或者说他们不敢，呃，非常自信的展现出他们的舞姿。那么我就非对此非常感兴趣，也是希望能够以他们更为自信、更为亲密的方式，去把男性独舞这个主题展现出来。那么这里可能厨房对于男士来讲，并不是一个常规的。他们经常会出现的一个地方，尽管很多的男士其实可以做饭，但是如果把这个场景设定的为厨房，有一位男士在独自起舞，对于很多女性观讲观观众来讲还是非常有吸引力的。那其实作品中的厨房是我自己的厨房，我住在柏林，然后我所住呃住的地方的厨房是非常的平坦，而且非常的大，就像一个剧院一样。这样我就可以让我的模特在这个剧院里面翩翩起舞。那么对于我来讲，也是一件非常有乐趣的事情，去装扮自己的厨房，把它装扮成一个可以供模特去展现自己的地方。我不太确定我的回答是否能够解决您的问题。嗯，也非常感谢您的问题提你提出的这个问题。And、thank you, Linda. Pleasure. And、um, back to you, Xi Yun. Do you think we can、uh, ask the last question? Yeah. Alan, um, please. Yes. Um, hi, and thank you so much, Linda and Rongwei, for your presentations.、Um, and thank you to the organizers for this forum. I, in looking at the. The last work that you showed, Ron, we、uh, in New Haven. I was thinking about loneliness and solitude, which are conditions that have come up and been expressed a lot during the pandemic, as people have been separated from each other. But I think of it also in photography, in general, and I, I think of your portraiture as a way of、um, compensating for that. Lonely position of the photographer. I think you mentioned being left behind. You mentioned being an only child, and I think of the loneliness and solitude of that experience. And I think of your contemplative portraiture with your friends as being a way of compensating for that, or maybe redressing that. And Lindell, also in your engagement with models in making your work, I think of what photography offers. Uh, in terms when when other people are included in it,、um, as a way of engaging with the world through one's quote unquote subjects. So I was just wondering if either of you might like to talk about that experience of the loneliness or solitude of the artist and how photography.、Um, Offers some compensation for that.、Uh, I can say a few words. Actually, this morning I was speaking on Instagram with a, a model I might work with, and I felt really emotional. And it was because I was connecting with somebody who was is quite outside my world. Otherwise, and and I have a lot of、uh, admiration for what they're doing,、uh, and and I just felt so grateful to art that that I was being connected with this person, and it's certainly something I think about quite a lot.、Uh, I think being an artist is very solitary, and it was something that was never told to us at art school, and there was definitely a time. Probably in my early thirties, where I felt like、um, it was a really hard thing about being an artist,、uh, and a photo photography, I think, particularly, can be lonely, and that you know that you're always outside the picture. That's such a well, almost always. And I mean, I have put myself in the picture, but you know, typically, photographers are outside the the picture. But yeah, as you say, I'm not sure if I'm really. Uh, answering your question so much as agreeing with you that、um, that photography can be an, an amazing way of connecting and and I really felt very emotional this morning connecting with this person and just being so grateful for my art practice that allows me to connect with 
people that I would otherwise have no relationship with. And thank you. 哦，不知道啊，陈老师还对这个问题有没有更多的阐释？ Oh, sorry, I'm mute. Uh, I just want to share. Okay, I can share my screen. It's just a little later. So during the during the pandemic, I read、uh, and I think our familiar poems, the artist. Poem letters to a young poet, and I read this poet again and again, and I just think about their pair. Their thing here, I think I want to share. Like,、um, yeah, I think. It's very interesting. The part called like even you are in a prison, you can also have your own childhood, your memory of your childhood, and this is other people cannot get from you. And and just think about like because during the pandemic, everyone is lonely, and I just think about what I can do as an artist, just in the home. You know, photography is always about、uh, we should go outside to take some photos and.、Uh, And then we come back to our house. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, as a you know,、uh, only child and also left behind a child in China, I experienced a lot of loneliness. But I think, on this way, I can say like art can help for me. I mean, photography can help. Yeah.、Mm. 那非常感谢两位的分享，也非常感谢我们今天的组织者能够为我们举行这么呃完呃这么完美的一次展示。那么首先呢，我其实想分享一下自己对这次分享的看法。那么首先，陈老师，您在您的作品中，就是刚才展示的作品中，其实展现出了一个主题，那就是孤独和寂寞。其实，在疫情之间，疫情的这段时间内。我们也是可以看到，呃，很多人都不得不分开，然后也，呃，也会经常处在孤独的这种环境中。那么，其实您的做法是通过摄影，去来补偿这种心理落差或者补偿这种孤独的感觉。那么，您其实也在分享中提到，自己是一名独生子女，而且也是留守的儿童。那么，这种孤独，其实，在呃，其实是更为突出。那么，摄影也会成为一种弥补这种孤独的方式。呃，对于 Linda 来讲，可能如果没有呃，在通过您的艺术展现方式，可能会把更多的人去因为一个特定的主题而聚集很多人在一起。那么，其实呃，如果没有艺术，这种呃聚集也不会产生。那么，我想请两位和大家分享一下，就是这种孤独、寂寞和艺术家，呃之间，呃这种艺术作为艺术家所体会的孤独与寂寞和摄影的关系。那么，首先 ，Linda 对这个问题的回答是：今天早上的时候，我通过 Instagram 和一位如果不是，呃，如果不是艺术。如果不是对于共同作品的喜欢，我们完全不可能遇见、完全不认识的，就是处在我世界之外的一位人士，产生了联系。那么，其实我对他也是非常的敬仰。但是如果不是艺术，我们可能并不会认识。在这儿呢，我非常，我想非常感谢艺术给了我这个机会。那么，其实作为一个艺术家来讲，这种孤独和寂寞。是常伴在我们身边的一种感受，这个呢不会由你的老师会告诉你，所以在早期的时候，在我们刚从事艺术创作的时候，可能也没有享受，也没有体会到，作为一名艺术家会如此的孤寂。那么摄影就是一种特殊的方式，能够帮助我们对抗这种孤独。当然，呃，一作为摄影师来讲，也给了我们更多的机会。去拍摄照片，但是更多的情况下
，我们可能不会出现这些照片里，而是更多的处在照片外。虽然我在我的作品里也会努力把自己去，呃，在照片里展现出来，但是大多数的情况还是会处在这个照片之外。那么我的回答其实，呃，不是回答您的这个问题，而是更多的去赞同您的观点，也就是艺术能够。联能够让我们和更多的人产生联系，而且艺术也给我们的机会，可以让我们交到更多的朋友。这就是像我刚才提到的，今天早晨的时候，我和那位朋友通过共同的主题，大家去，大家能够去连接到一起。那么我们的陈老师对这个呃问题的回复，其实是来自于他非常喜欢的一首诗，叫做。A letter to a young poet 是给一给一位年轻诗人的信。然后这首诗其实陈老师在疫情期间也会反复的去诵读。那这里面好就提到了说，嗯，老师您刚才分享那个句子，因为我没有记下来，是不是说就是不管你在处在一个什么的环境下，你都可以去呃维护你自己，去营造你自己的童年。就他说，其实你在呃监狱里，你不还是也有你自己的童年吗？就是差不多这个意思。哦、好的，谢谢老师。作为作为作为这个母题来创作，当然也是通过了呃，谢谢老师，然后通过了这个主题进行了很多的创作。其实艺术也是摄影艺术。也是给了我们更多的机会去主动走出去，然后去拍摄照片，并且拿到新的收获和照片回到家中。所以，呃，艺术家是孤独的，但是他同时也给了我们机会，去呃和人呃去对抗这种孤独。那非常感谢两位老师进行的分享。好的，嗯，谢谢 Jordan 的翻译。嗯，现在我们已经进行了差不多快。一个半小时，我想我们的讲座也差不多到这里该结束了。再次感谢大家前来参加本次会议，特别感谢 Linda Walker 以及嗯陈荣辉，谢谢你们慷慨的分享。如果大家对于两位艺术家有更多的提问，可以关注我们的公众号，或者关注我们的 Instagram， 以及加入嗯 Zoom 讲座分享群。他的二维码我分享在聊天室中，嗯，敬请扫码关注。那么，嗯，大家我们下回讲座见。Um, thank you, Jordan, so so much. And it's a more than 1.5 hours right now, so I think our lecture will end here. And thanks again for everyone attending this meeting. Thank you so so much for Lindo Walker and Rong Hui Chen. We sincerely, sincerely appreciate your generous presentations. For audience, if you have any questions, please email us and uh, also follow our. Instagram. See you next time.